All right. Well, thanks again for taking the time to join me today. Um, so I just like, uh, we have just a couple students and CJ is an alumni, but um, if you wouldn't mind um, just introducing yourself and let us know a little bit about you um, and where you're from, what year you graduated from Campion or are in in Campion and we're, what you're doing now. So Amira, would you start please? Yes. Um, I am Amira and I am Amira Davis. I am um, going to my senior year at Campion. I will be a four-year senior. I'm from Alamosa, Colorado. Well, I'm from Alamosa, Colorado, but my family is from Florida. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Emma, go ahead next. Okay, yeah. My name is Emma Constantino. I went to Campion my sophomore year. That was my first year there. And I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. And I was adopted from Haiti when I was three years old. So my parents are white. And I also have a brother who's also adopted from there. Okay. And CJ, would you tell us a little about you? I'm CJ Middlebrooks. I graduated from Campion in 2012. And I'm from Colorado Springs. And currently, I'm working as a medical scribe. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. So, of course, we're here to talk about um, some racial issues, giving us some perspective from current students and alumni of how we can do better. Like, we don't want to just put out a statement that we are going against racism, but we actually want to listen to some voices from current and present about what, what, um, how this is affecting you and what, what we should be doing and, and how we should be listening. So, um, so how has, um, starting with the killing of George Floyd and of course the countless others that we've seen and heard about recently um, and the following protests impacted you personally? Um, Amira, would you mind starting again? Um, okay. Um, the main impact that George, George Floyd's death and all the other, um, people that have been killed, that have been brought to light recently. It's just um, mainly opened up my eyes that the world hasn't changed and that it's still so cruel and it's just sad, you know? Mm-hmm. CJ, I, have a um, I haven't had a chance to, oops, sorry. No, you're good, go ahead, Mamera. I haven't got a chance to participate in any of the protests going on because of my location. It was a small protest in my town, but it was small and not a lot of information got out to when and where it would be happening. So I didn't get to go. Hmm. CJ, how about you? Um, there's a lot of tension, I think, everywhere I go because like with, with the masks plus the recent protests over the recent killings, um, everyone or a lot of people have been, I guess, tiptoeing around me recently, more recently, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like it's, it's been really weird because I was wearing, so I have a oh. Union College uh, We Are Warriors shirt and I was wearing it at a Sprouts one day and I, had, I wasn't even thinking and it was during the first week of the protests. And one of the cashiers was like, man, I love that. I love your shirt. And I was like, I was like what? what are you talking about? I was like, oh, it's just the, the basketball team that, at Union College. And I was like, oh, I was like, now I understand what he was, he was referring to the protests after I talked to him for a little bit. But I was like, I didn't, I didn't think about that. But like everyone's, it's like they're walking on eggshells right now, kind of, because of everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about for you, Emma? Um, I feel like it's definitely opened my eyes to how serious racism is in America and how it hasn't changed. It's just like gotten worse. and. It's um, kind of like has me thinking about like ways we can make it better and like really talk to each other and have these difficult conversations because I feel like before it's kind of like just avoided and like 
everyone knew about it, but we didn't really talk about it. And now everyone's talking about it. And definitely what CJ was saying, everyone's just like walking on eggshells and there's like a lot of tension because now we're like bringing an issue that was like an issue a long time ago. We're actually bringing it to the surface, surface and dealing with it. And it's hard and really stressful. And I've been really stressed and I just don't really know how to deal with it. And I've just kind of had mixed feelings about it. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, and for you growing up, like, I guess, you know, in a white family, does that make you feel like it's hard to uh, relate that with other people in your family? Yeah, definitely, definitely. But my family has been very supportive, and I have conversations with them. But I was stressed with them for a little bit, but, you know, we were starting to have those conversations, so. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um I asked you guys each to think about, you know, have you, do you feel like you've experienced racism in your life? Um, and particularly at Campion, did you feel like you experienced racism at Campion? I don't know. Jump in. Who'd ever like to go first? I have to call on you guys. All right, CJ, how about you? You've lived a little longer. Um. I actually, so I came back, after I graduated, I came back home and um, since I, th I think, since I was in the Adventist system for so long, I never really, I never really thought about it until after like, I came home and I was talking to my brothers about things and like some things that happened could have been seen as racism, but I think how it's, how it was like, I guess how they said it, it, it wasn't, I guess. So like, I didn't even think it was racist, but like some people could see it as racist. So I don't think, I never, I never thought about it, like going through Campion. Yeah, you know. never felt like you experienced over racism, which is a good thing. <laughs> Definitely a good thing. I'm pretty sure they were like racist jokes, but it wasn't like no one was, no one didn't like me because of the color of my skin. And that was, and that was, that was one cool thing about Campion mm. or Adventist yeah. education in general. Yeah, I knew it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. Um, how about you, Amira? Um, I honestly haven't. I have spent a lot of time in the, um, Adventist, the Adventist system and in, um, school. I was at, in a public middle school, but everybody was cool there too. Again, I have like, there are racist jokes and it is brought up as a joke, but no one's ever not liked me because of the color of my skin, which I really appreciate. The only time I um, came close was one time, like in third grade, where this um, girl, she didn't share something with me because she said she, quote, didn't like black people. And that really just broke my heart because to be denied something just for something I can't change, it's not my fault it really opened up my eyes. Like I, I haven't had like a direct impact with that racism since then, but it just really, even thinking about it just blows my mind that you could think that way. Mm. Yeah, so something like that just kind of sticks with you over time, I imagine, right? Mm. Yeah. How about you, Emma? Um, again, like, I didn't really experience that much. I've been in Adventist schooling since, like, kindergarten. But, like, people will say, like, racist comments or, like, just, like, things to other Black kids in my school that, like, also affects me because I say it. And, like, um, even just, like, kids, too. Like, I've heard, like, kids, you know, say racist jokes or, like, say things that are, like, you know, cruel to, like, other Black kids in their class. And it's just, like, it just shows you how much of a problem it is and, like, how it affects everyone and how, like, how we're teaching our kids is like feeding to the system. 
Cool. Yeah, I haven't really experienced it a lot because I, I feel like I'm more privileged than uh, other Black people that I know, you know, just being raised in a white family and stuff. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm glad to hear that all of you are have felt like that wasn't hasn't been a major part of your experience in your life and that that the Adventist system seems to be doing overall pretty well in that area, although um, I'm sure there's still room for improvement. Um, and that, that kind of is my next question. Like, what can we do as a school at Campion to um, be better um, at becoming anti-racist? Like, not just, um, you know, not, not being racist, but being anti-racist and teaching our students um, how to be more inclusive. Uh, we'll start with CJ again. Um, this doesn't have anything to do with the campion, but I was talking to one of my friends the other day, and he was saying, like, he, he grew up in Florida, and racism, like, it wasn't, like, he didn't, until he left that area, like, he didn't realize, like, it was a thing. Because where he was from, like, everybody was cool with everyone kind of thing. But once he got out of that, it was like, this, this actually happened. So it's like, mm. I think letting people know that it's okay to have either black friends or like hang around black people. Like they're not, they're not any different than other people than the color of their skin. Like, I think that just like education, I, I guess. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe like, like you said, just because like we don't see racism happening in our school doesn't mean it's not not real and doesn't exist and we might be blessed to live in a community that's more integrated in that way but that doesn't mean that's not happening elsewhere right um we'll jump back to you amira what can campion do better to you? educate students to be anti-racist? Um, honestly, camping's doing such a great job. And it's maybe because I'm an international ambassador, but they're so accepting. Like I've never seen so many people come together like and accept different cultures, different languages. It's honestly beautiful, but I do believe like just education that that we're not different like we're all people like and just that and to be like not sensitive but some jokes are aren't funny because it's it's inappropriate i feel like that's something that should be also said Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually, um, what we talked about with our international students, right? We have our students from the Democratic Republic of Congo, and I'm not sure it was so much them, just kind of their friend group, though, that I found out later they're throwing around, like, kind of a racial slur in French, right? That, that I, I was like, I did not know that was like a racial slur, but it was, you know, just kind of done as a joke, but like, you know, that's probably not really appropriate <laughs> for other, other people to use, <laughs> right? So, um, Emma, how about you? Yeah, so I think educating, um, like, people that, like, we're not different, that we're all the same is good, but we also need to educate that we are different and embrace the beauty that we have in different cultures and, like, because, like, the more you learn about another culture, you can learn about that person. And that are just, like, just make people more open to, like, talk about stuff and not just, like, I feel like it'll help us not feel like we're so different if we, like, learn about their culture and, like, we learn about them. And then also, like, just taking accountability. Like, if someone says a racist comment, rather than just, like, like pushing it off or, like, saying, like, it's not a big deal, like, really actually um, attacking that issue and explaining why, like, it hurt us or, like, why it's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Um, when I was talking to um, Sergeant Rob Pride um, about 
police reform and racial issues. Uh, he mentioned that at Campion too, that he didn't feel like he experienced a lot of, you know, a lot of overt racism, but it was something that was just never talked about, right? That like, we felt like we're doing okay. So we just never feel like you have to have that kind of conversation, but that maybe we do need to discuss that as, as an issue and recognize, as, and it, the goal isn't to be colorblind, but to celebrate our differences and our diversity, right? And to embrace that. So to have those conversations, I think is a great um, comment, Emma, which is what we're doing here today. <laughs> so um, what about uh, in our Adventist church kind of as a whole, um, what do you think that we could be doing better? I mean, I know you guys have had really good comments to say about our Adventist school systems, but what is something that we can do as an Adventist church as a whole? Because that's just really um, broad, a lot of different areas. So you have any ideas? Let's start with Amira this time. Um, just more acceptance, I guess. Like, um, just more acceptance because like, um, some churches are labeled, I guess, as certain, like, um, this church is a white church and this one's a black church and this one's this kind of church. I feel like acceptance is a big thing because, like, if someone different comes in, you should be just accepting as them as anyone else in the church. And you shouldn't change your service or anything about your church but just acceptance and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, CJ, how about you? Any ideas for our churches? So you're down in Parker area now, you said, right? Or Colorado Springs? I'm in Thornton right now. So oh, Thornton, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I actually, uh, I read an article two days ago or yesterday, and it was talking about how it was for Sunday service, but Sunday service is one of the most segregated times in like the United States of America because you have, you have your white churches, you have your black churches, you have your Hispanic churches, you have your Asian churches, like it's all, it's all different. But like Emma said, Emma, Emma said, she, uh, she was like, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, um, uh, she said, we shouldn't just educate them that we're just, we're, we're, uh, I forgot what she said. We aren't. All the same. We, we, we're all the same, but to also celebrate our differences. And I think that's one way, like, even though it is segregated still, like that's one way churches are still able to worship the way they are, but like, um, you should still be, they should just like taking away that label, I guess. Because like some Caucasian people love going to black churches and some African-American people love going to white churches or Caucasian churches. And it's just like, yeah. It's worship, like, worship like to, Yeah, it's like how you like to worship. Hmm. Yeah. And it shouldn't be, oh, well, that's, a, that's a black church. Well, that's like the white church or that's like the super conservative church. It's like, Everyone likes to worship differently. It's just, I guess it's just human nature to label things as such. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I often wonder about that. Like we enjoy so much to be together with people who kind of like have our, even if we're not racist, right? We just naturally congregate to people who, have very similar culture and ideas to us in both church. And um, I always think of the cafeteria, no matter what school I'm at, it's like have these little groups of non people who don't mix too well <laughs> um, because they want to be with people who talk and think and like them. But how do we, how do we encourage that more um, integration between, between groups, even if it's not like they don't like them because of their color, their skin, but, to try to encourage more diverse friendships. 
So I, I'm sorry, I didn't, Emma, I didn't let you answer the question about church. No, no, it's totally okay. But yeah, I definitely think that also like bringing the com conversation of race into the church is also important because like the, the Bible does talk about race and like, just because like we're in church, like doesn't mean like it's still not important, and, like it can't be addressed. So like, I don't know, I think that's still like important so it doesn't like creep, creep on them, and, like create problems in the church. Cause someone may be feeling a certain way about like race, but like, because they're not talking about it, it's just kind of like staying inside and they feel like they have to be someone else at church. Cause I always feel like I have to be someone else when I'm at church. And like, that kind of has to do with like my skin, just like also like how I was raised too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I didn't really put this in my questions, but I wanted to ask because Campion, I mean, we're, we're fairly diverse in some ways, I think. Um, well, we're pretty diverse, but we, we don't actually have that many Black people at Campion, right? We have more Asian, Hispanics, and, and white people, right? Um, and international students, too. But, um, like, how, do, how does it feel to be, like, such a minority in a school like Campion? And how does it affect, like, your identity as, uh, as a Black person? Or maybe you're growing up because a lot of you guys grew up or I know Emma like in your family and and just living in Colorado um, a lot of our most of our except for kind of Denver is really predominantly white so how does that affect your identity or your experience kind of growing up in a more predominantly white culture um it kind of made me feel like I don't like really belong in the black culture or, like I'm not really black or, like I've lost my blackness because I'm not around it a lot so like, I'm really happy just like when I'm around black people because like, they're just great people and I love the culture. And I feel like sometimes my family like doesn't really recognize that a lot. And like, I have no problem like being raised like in a white family, you know, obviously like I do different things than my African family does. But like for a while I was like, I want to go to a black school because I want to be black and I want to experience those things I don't experience at my predominantly white schools. But now I realize that blackness is different and there's like just this big umbrella of blackness and it comes from everywhere and like you can be from America and be black you can be from Africa and be black and like you can be from Haiti and be black and I've embraced that more and not be ashamed of like being raised by white parents rather just being like I'm black but I'm raised differently but that doesn't mean I'm not black and that it changes anything just because I wasn't raised like my African friend was. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not just one it's not one culture group really right yeah Mary, did you want to speak to that? Yes, I relate to you so much, so, so much. Um, as I said, my family is from Florida, so most of my family is still there. And when I go down there, I, again, I feel lost, like I'm not part of the Black community. I, I act different, I talk different, I don't have the accent. I, you know, like everyone else is different. And I feel like it makes me separate. I was raised in a different place and it just makes me feel separate. And um, I've got to realize that blackness is an umbrella. And just because I was raised in a different place does not make me any less black from anyone else. Mm. Yeah. How about you, CJ? Any thoughts on identity or being um, kind of in, in the minority? I think I have a difficult time with, like, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm an African-American male. But, like, growing up, like, all of my friends were like, you're the whitest Black person I know. So it it's hard because, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, are they referring to your actual color or are they referring to, like, trying to say, like, you're culturally white? Like, my act, like, how I talk, how I, like, how I do things, like, but I am a light, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's it. Because, like, for me, like, I, since I'm a light, I, I, I am a lighter skinned African American male, like, I don't experience the same, the mm. same situations as dark African Americans. Mm. That's so I, I like yeah growing up like I just all most of my friends were were white and I think I had a handful of I can count about ten black friends 
as a growing up that I had. And that was just like, that's just how it was, I guess. So I don't, like you said, the blackness, like I don't, I don't understand that, I guess. And I've, and I, I've lost that sense of identity, that part of my identity, like, and that's been for years because of that. So I don't, I don't understand that completely. Mm-hmm. Like I know I'm black. And I can see that I am, but like, I don't completely understand it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, like you might have a completely different experience if you're growing up in a more uh, black community, black neighborhoods and stuff like that, right? Like, we, which we see in more in other parts of the country versus um, in, our, in Colorado or our area. Because I've seen like, I've seen, I've been treated differently at the same place as my darker friends. And it's just like, mm. wow, like that's crazy. Mm. But that, was, that was like after, that was after the campaign and everything. Yeah, yeah, but you've seen that just the, the levels, right? Mm. Interesting. Um, so I guess I, final question, final thoughts from you guys, what, what are your hopes for the future and what um, would be the biggest changes in society at large that you hope would come true as a result of, of this movement, the current protests and just a, kind of kind of an awakening that we're having with society? What would be some of those big changes in society that you hope to see? Let's start with Emma this time. Um, my main biggest like wish or like hope is that we'll start taking accountability, you know, because I feel like a lot of like these killings have happened even before George Floyd. And like the reason why their Chauvin was like able to even do that was because he was like left off the hook and like no one dealt with it. So I feel like, I hope that like we start to deal with it more. And like, if it happens once, like we do it right then and there, not just like, oh, it won't happen again. We'll give them another chance, you know? Cause when it's that, when it's that serious, like I don't feel like someone should be keeping their job if they're acting that way. And you should definitely be like, more aware of their mental health as well and like how they're doing and train them better and like how they can deal with humans because like there is a law but like you're also just dealing with people so that's definitely one of the bigger things mm-hmm. yeah um how about you amira next um as emma said i want the same thing awareness accountability but I really want more social like awareness. I want everyone to realize there is a problem. I want everyone to be, to stand up for what is right. And when they see a problem for people to help and talk about it so that we can deal with it. Because I feel like in the past that was not the case at all. We weren't talking about it. It was just being swept under the rug and this really has um all of us coming together really shown us what we can do as a whole yeah yeah definitely brought brought it back to more the light versus teaching it like it's just something in from the past right that we still have work to do Mm -hmm. how about you cj I want Jesus to come sooner. Uh, that's just uh, um, Amen. <laughs> I, I want people to realize that just because we like with these killings, like people just want, I guess, justice. I think it is, and like they've been waiting for that for a while. And I'm not saying it hasn't happened, like it, it, it hasn't happened, it, it, it hasn't happened. But for people to understand that just because people of color want justice for these killings, like that doesn't mean that we want anything bad to happen to other races. Like we're not trying to overtake like the country or whatever, like we just want justice. We want to be treated like everyone else. So I think what would help that would be more education, more maybe more training for officers. Like I don't I don't know what the current 
police academy like duration is right now. Like it's, I think it was like a few, a few months or something it was. But I, I that's it, yeah. Um, but like more training for officers and how to de-escalate situations because there have been other situations where the situation was de-escalated and no one had to die. Mm -hmm. and deadly force didn't have to be used, so yeah, just, just training, I guess. And I don't, I've never been in that situation before, so I don't understand what it's like to be there either. But like something to help officers not to just keep killing people in general, even. But like at this time, we are talking about African American people. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, thanks again for all sharing your thoughts. Um, any, any final words or thoughts that you want to share that you would like us to hear and listen from your perspective as Campion uh, teachers and staff and Campion students? Like, what do we need to know? Any final thoughts there? I have a story. Perfect. So, yeah. Last, uh, two weekends, last weekend, we were out and I think we were, we were bowling last weekend with a bunch of friends. And it was, I think it was like 10 to 15 minutes after the establishment closed. And we were, we were outside our vehicles and we were just talking with a group of friends. Uh, one of the vehicles had music playing and I was riding a freeboard it was like a long board with my younger brother and his buddy. And all of a sudden, three cop cars pull up. And it was like, oh, oh, oh no. So it was like, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. I look and turn at my brother and the look in his eyes, it was just, it was fear. Like, and there's no reason like that should be, that should be a thing. Because like, I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't even think about it, but after the police officers pulled up, I looked at, I looked at Sam and I just, that look in his eyes was like, Oh my gosh, like this is, this is a lot worse than, <laughs> a lot worse than I thought it was. And we, we started walking in the opposite direction. Cause we were like, Nope. Especially with like all the tension that's there today. Like it was just like, Nope. And like, that shouldn't, that, I don't know. That shouldn't, that shouldn't be in a young man's in anyone's eyes like that's yeah mm -hmm. so that you shouldn't have to have an experience of fear with our police officers right that it should be oh and here they're here to protect us right so right which is maybe in general a little bit more how white people might might view it right yeah because our friends they were Although i don't like to get pulled over either <laughs> pardon me i don't like to get pulled over either <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good day. Yeah. Our other friends were two of them were white, and like they were like, because my girlfriend was there as well, and she was like, "Oh, like I was just talking to police officers." And I was like, "That's crazy!" Like, just it's a different experience. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well. Um... Emma, Mira, do you, do either of you had any final things you wanted to share with us? Okay, well, thank you again so much for coming and uh, I'm just talking to me a little bit. I'm, I'm glad to hear good things about Campion, but of course we're always open to hearing uh, what we need to do to do better. So I just want to Pray for, for us that um, we can all we can all lift up Christ in all of our relationships and with people of every different race and color. So thanks again so much for sharing, and um, yeah. <laughs>